So do you have questions, last questions, before we start with the sadhana? Yes. Uh, the question is if uh, every time when I'm doing this um, uh, sadhana, should I uh, focus on one action, a, spe a specific action, or just <laughs> I don't know. purifying everything? I don't know. What shall I say? I don't know. You know, you see, if I would be a Buddha, I would know what you need what is really most eminent, but I'm not a Buddha, so how can I say? I don't know, again, go with your feeling. If you feel that something is bothering you, that you can't let go, then do that. Otherwise, you know, you do, in general, the Tibetans, they're not going into, into specific actions. They do, since whatever I did, since beginningless time, with body, speech, and mind, tuck, I regret, and that's it. So, uh, but if you have, you know, if, if there's something that you can't let go or something like that, then do that. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not, again, it's not always the same. It can be sometimes like this, sometimes like that. Um, it's really good to do t at least 21 mantras every day. So again, you don't have to, you know, if this is too long, but it's really short. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you just read, this is why I took this sadhana, so you can do it as a daily practice. I mean, if you just read it, it takes 10 minutes at the most. How many minutes does a day have? 20, 24 times 60. Many minutes has a day. 10 minutes to kind of to avoid future suffering? Because like, then they say if you do it 21 times a day, at least it doesn't increase. Karma doesn't increase. Yeah? And then maybe at one point, do take three months off and go and do 100,000. Because then you will feel the effect. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, but it's enough to do 21 mantras. Actually, they say at least daily. But then, of course, like with everything else, the more you do, the better. Yeah. It, it, this is obvious. But if you do like one whole mala or ten malas or whatever, with the mind was totally distracted, it is better to do 21, totally being there, what you're doing. So. Again, it, you know, that's the thing, it, it totally throws it back to you, you, what you make of it, not like coming from outside something, yeah? And uh, yeah, it, it can become a habit, it can become a habit before you go to sleep, you, um, you know, take refuge. If you want, you can do generating bodhicitta, if you want, you can do four immeasurables, seven limbs, as you do in other sadhanas. Then you visualize, then you do 21 mantras, and then you go to dedicate and you go to sleep. With time, you, can, you, don't, you don't need the sadhana anymore. I like the sadhana because I tend to leave things out that I don't forget. So this is why I still, I, you know, even though maybe I know my sadhanas by heart, maybe, but I still read them every morning. Yeah, so. And also, I'm not an evening person, so I need to do all my stuff in the morning before I start going out. Otherwise, it's like, you know, tuck, 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 and not really done properly. But again, that's me. So you check. Some other people, they work better in the evening. So they prefer to do it in the evening. So you need to find out. It's like, yeah. Any other questions? I hope so. You want to take the sadhana with you? You can. I sent it to everyone, by the way. You have it on your computers, you know. I can send it again if you like. But if you need it to be done, then. Uh, in Bern, I usually do like this. Uh, if you take it home, you have to promise to do it at least 10 times <laughs> in this life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Easy. Yeah? Okay. So. So that, you know, you take it home, not just to take it home and put it in a corner, yeah. but you take it home to practice, because then it's very good for the center to offer texts. I mean, in Asia, they have understood that. So people kind of, they, they sponsor the printing of books, and then the books are given freely, yeah? So the FPMT is also doing that with uh, English books of, you know, Lama Yeshe, Lama Zopa, from the Yeshe, Lama Yeshe Wisdom Archive. So people donate money, you know, if you can't sponsor the printing of one book because it's very expensive, but, you know, you, you make offerings every year or something. And then with that, they can print the books and then they are distributed freely. So, so then giving, giving people practice material, I think it's very good karma also for, for a center. 
because, yeah. And then when you do again as a group, then, you know, you need to more print more. I mean, you print more. I mean, how many pages are it like? One, two, three, four pages. Like. Cost-wise, it's nothing, yeah? And if you take it home, you want to give a donation, then you're very welcome to. You say, I sponsored the, the future ones or whatever. Again, you know, it's like it's very, a very individual way, the way you handle it. But then you know how to treat Dharma materials. It's like you're not throwing it in the garbage when you don't want to do it anymore. Um, you're not sitting on it. You're not stepping on it. You keep it in a clean place like that because it, it's, it's your... How to say? It's a manual how to attain enlightenment. So. so the more respect you give it, the more you get from it. Again, you know, if, you, if I do this to say, uh, you know, don't do like this, then it's okay because the holiness is not in the text. The holiness is you seeing the text as something holy. Yeah? So, but if I say like, oh, this, you know, then I create negative karma. So, but it's good to know this whole thing because also it's not a Western thing to, to keep text in a high place and to respect them. So then, you know, you go to somewhere in the East, India, Nepal, whatever, you sit somewhere, your text is on the floor, it's for sure you have a Tibetan who comes and picks it up and puts it in your lap, puts it on your back or something, and they look at you in a very kind of uh, way because for them we are barbarians. The way we treat masters, the way we treat text is like, pff, you know, we're total barbarians, absolutely no respect or, or whatever. So don't get upset, don't get angry at them because, you know, the mind can go, it's none of your business what I do with my text. They're concerned about your karma. So it's good to know, so you know why they're doing this. Yeah. Can I suppose you Yeah, it's the same goes for Buddhist texts. Yeah, you value your text, you know, you know, you... But again, it's not, the value is not coming from this side, the value comes from that side. Yeah, so like this. Okay, so we start. Page five. So you might have noticed, so the way when you do retreat, the way you do retreat, when you, st when you start your retreat, the first few days, your sessions are quite short. And then as you are in the middle of the retreat, it becomes long. And then while you go towards the end of retreat, it becomes shorter again. So they say you should do your retreat like a, like a corn, you know, like a, a, a wheat kind of seed, that it goes like that. Yeah, so... The first session we did in the morning was quite short. The last session was quite long. This session again is quite short because it's the last one. Yeah, so, because so the energy is needed or because? Because you're starting to get used to it. You, I mean, this in, you, one day would not be called a retreat, okay? But when you do it every day? Then, then do it the same. If you do it once every day, then you do it the same. Okay. Yeah. Then you do it the same the length. Session. If you do it in one session, then you do it the same length. But when I talk about retreat, because retreat, I mean a month, two months, three months. That means you have to get used to being in the retreat. So if you start with long sessions, you know, you get... Then you can't continue because you're not used to sit for so long. And then in the middle, you're used to sit for so long, so then you can do long sessions. And towards the end, it became... Again, it becomes shorter because you start to get used to go out again. Yeah? You start to relax. You start to relax your retreat. So again, it's a very, very skillful way of doing things. Yeah? And then also, again, you know, when I say do it the same every day, not necessarily. If you feel, if you have a lot of time, you do it long. If you feel inspired, you do it. You can do this two hours or even more, one session. If you have very little time or whatever, then you do it short, but do it, yeah? 
Try to do it in a way that inspires you and so it doesn't become a burden. Because the moment it becomes a burden, you drop it, you know. You will drop it. And by thinking about the results of this, then you, get, you become more joyful. Yeah. We can make a lot of effort when we know something is in there, but at the end of making the effort. Yeah. And that joy in Westerners is usually missing because we don't feel when negative imprints get go because we, they have, they're not manifest yet, so we don't feel them. And as they say, you know, karma is already manifest, you can't purify because it's already manifest. It's like, it's like the same with seeds. If the seeds are not manifest yet, you can just burn them and finish, you know, or, you know, crush them and then they go. But if the seed has become a tree, it's very difficult to do something. Then you need a lot of effort to, to destroy it. Yeah, so like this. So it is really like if you know that, let's say you have been in Fukushima at when the atomic fallout was there, okay? So, you know, you don't feel anything when you're there. You don't smell it, you don't see it, you don't taste it, atomic fallout. It's not like other chemicals that you smell or you see like fumes and things like that. You don't see it. So if nobody comes to tell you, hey, you come on, you've got something in your body, so you better get out of the, of the place and stop eating the fish and the vegetables from there. You continue eating the fish and the meat and the, and the vegetables and the mushrooms and whatever from there. So you need somebody that knows. It's like the Buddha knows we create karma. So we have something latent in us that would result in suffering. So we need to trust that. So if you don't trust that, si that, that, uh, si that how do you say them? How you call them? If you don't trust this um, sci science man, how you call him? Scientist. scientist, yeah, thank you. <laughs> if you don't trust the scientist, you say, well, what are you saying? Why should I leave my house? I don't feel anything. I don't smell anything. I don't taste anything. I don't feel, why, sh why should I leave my house? You know, then you stay there. And then you get more and more contaminated. You get sicker and sicker and sicker. If you believe it, if you trust it, even though you, you don't feel anything, then you leave. Okay. And, and imagine if there would be a, an antidote for the things that are, are already in your body, people will kill for it to get it. Yeah? But there is no antidote. But if there would be one, and the antidote is this for our negative karma, to use the antidote. But somehow, we, we lack believing it, that we have latent imprints that can really throw us into the lower states for eons and eons and, well, maybe not eons, but for, for a long time, somehow. We're not disturbed enough by this. We don't believe the scientist. We don't believe the Buddha. You know, believe, yeah, we do believe, but mm, because so many other things are so much more important than purification. Yeah. And you see that you're agitated or bored with the practice because it happens to me many times. Yeah, me also. What I don't know what I personally do, just to remind myself exactly of that, yeah. I uh, emphasize upon the motivation more than on the practice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have to motivate myself yeah. more. Yeah. And it works for a few days. You okay. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it helps a little. Also, I think, you know, a big mistake that people are making, they think they have to like what they're doing. <laughs> it's like saying, you know, I have to like eating, I have to like the medicine that I'm swallowing. It's like, you don't need to like it, you have to swallow it. You have to do it. Yeah? And then the result from it, very quickly, you will find in your daily life. Not necessarily while you're doing the practice, not necessarily on the cushion, but your whole way of thinking and how you see the world, it changes slowly, slowly, according to how much you practice. Yeah, so then again, but the biggest mistake is that we think it has to be pleasant. Otherwise, not working. If I'm not full of inspiration with tears flowing down my face because <laughs> I, have, I really feel how negative I am and, you know, get all emotional. If that's not happening, it's not working. We try to become sober not kind of drunk with emotions, 
Yeah. So that's again, you know, when you, the beginning of your purification practice, yeah, if you start crying because you understand what, you've done, what you've done, it's okay, but not for years and years and years. Then again, it's just an ego play, you know, I'm so bad, blah, blah, blah. look at what I've done. Blah, blah. It's like, yeah, you, be, you try to become open, spacious, sober, rational, normal, ordinary. So it sounds as if life is becoming really dull and boring if you become like that, but it's not. It becomes less agitated, that's true, so it becomes less excited. So you will not go very high up, but that means you will also not fall very, very low. So that's the, that is the, the kind of, that's one of the results of your practice, that you will become more normal, relaxed. Quiet. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not being so much under the control of your emotions, and people are afraid of that. People are afraid of not, not being, you know, not having these emotions anymore. They think they become like vegetables. I mean, does the Dalai Lama look like a vegetable? Does he look not being interested in life and in people? Not at all. So. Take or Lama Zopa or you know Ringo Tulku who was here or Gachin Rinpoche. They have genuine peace of mind. Whatever happens, is okay. So this um, I don't know I might have told you, but it's really touching and moving. But it's very simple and very it's not extraordinary. But in my eyes, it's really extraordinary. Um, the Geshe in San Francisco, he's been there for a long time. He's been resident teacher in Zhechen Ling for, pff, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 years. So of course he came from, the, from India, I'm from Tibet and to India. He didn't speak a word of English. So then, you know, he saw that people are really kind of not relaxed with him because they don't know how to treat the Tibetan Geshe. So the first words that he learned was, it doesn't matter to calm them down. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter. You know, they again found out, oh, this is not how to treat the Geshe. It's okay, it doesn't matter. Out of, you know, in, in order to make them feel comfortable. So that was the first thing he learned in English was, it's okay. Isn't that nice? Not to teach them how they should treat him, but to make them relaxed. It doesn't matter. And we're far too tense. You know, we want too much, we're too tense, we're kind of achievers and doers and woo, and, yeah. So Dharma is also about becoming happy losers. <laughs> well, that's a good one, you know. You succeed, fine. You don't succeed, it's also okay. That's very difficult for the Western mind. Very, very difficult. You know, this, this kind of instinctive feeling I'm special and people have to see that I'm special and they have to see that I'm doing especially good Dharma practitioner or especially bad Dharma practitioner or whatever. You know, we can't bear to be ordinary. We need to stick out of the crowd somehow. So if you want to stick out of the crowd, just become a nun and walk around like this in the West, many people will look at you. <laughs> and not always in a friendly way. So yeah, then you feel how it, how it is to be really special. This is what Lama Zopa says, you know, all the actors, kind of, they, they, there's so much effort so that people notice them and they become special. Then once they're special and they have all the, journali the journalists kind of waiting for them when they come out of the house, then they complain. So then Lama Zopa said, what do they want? Do they want to be famous and be, you know, be known by everybody when they go somewhere? Or do they not want to be famous? So they need to, you need to make up your mind what you want to do. Yeah. But we all have this very, very deep sitting thing, I am special. So the Dharma practice is about becoming ordinary. Not, not especially good, not especially bad, just normal. Yeah. And, and not being bored by being normal. This is the thing. Oh, good thing I'm normal. Good thing I'm ordinary. Because also when you're ordinary, you can't fall very low, yeah? I mean, how many people, when they have been very famous, then they, you know, they lose their capacity of whatever beauty or skills in skiing or tennis or football or whatever, then they suffer because nobody, they can't, 
they can't do this anymore. Yeah, so. But as they say, better not to get high, get better not to get on the on the what is it on the tree of fame. Better not to get too high up because then you don't fall so low. Because you yeah, will fall. When you're high up, then everyone can see your bottom. Oh, okay. They're waiting. They're just waiting for you. You know. Yeah. <laughs> the the human the human competition, isn't it? 